Now let's learn how to use the digital reader function of NIMIDAC. As we're getting started here, a couple points about the eight digital I.O. ports. They expect 0 to 3.3 volt signals and make sure that you do not exceed 5 volts when you apply them as inputs. I'm using this specific circuit here. I have a switch and the analog output as two signal sources for the digital I.O. I'll start up the digital reader here. You see that we have the indicators for the eight line states and you can choose which zone you want to work with, either lines 0 to 3, 4 to 7, or all. So that way you can have a mixture of some that are inputs and some that are outputs. And you'd use the corresponding digital writer for the outputs. Here I have 5 volts connected by way of this switch back to DIO1. When I press the switch, we see that the indicator 0 activate. So that, that tells us that my deck detects that the uh, switch is controlling that digital input line. Now here I'm using the digital multimeter, especially the voltage meter function, to monitor the voltage associated with the DIO uh, zero or input zero. So I'd like to mention a couple points about the actual voltage levels involved here. Now we see when the switch is open that it's detecting 0 0.03 volts and when closed it sees 4.87 volts. Now again remember the maximum voltage to subject the input to is uh, 5 volts. Now this is looking at the actual 5 volt supply generated by MIDAC. So with no loading, it's generating 5.01 volts. Now let me observe how that line, that it, that is the 5 volt uh, supply, varies when we close the switch. Closing the switch causes the supply to drop to 4.87 volts or just over a tenth of a volt drop. So that tells you that the input line actually loads the 5 volt source just a little bit. And that has to actually do with the uh, 75k pull down resistor that is included on the input line. Now this application allows me to adjust analog output zero. I'm not using analog output one, just zero. And I have zero connected directly to DIO number three. Now I want to make sure that I don't exceed the zero to five volt range. So I'm adjusting my lower and upper bounds. So this way I can then vary the analog output according to any value between 0 and 5 volts. I'm using the voltmeter to monitor the an analog output 0 and we see that we've got good correspondence between the two there. Now watch the indicator number 3 as I slowly go from uh, low value to high value. Okay, there, there it just switched. Looks like that's somewhere around 1.7 Again, the input is only expecting really between 0 and 3.3. Oh, here it, it looks like it went low again. Let's see if we can study exactly where this threshold is, where it transitions between uh, high and low value. So I'm working my way up gradually, waiting to see when this one switches high. Okay, did it at 1.7 volts. Now let's see where it switches on the way down. Looks like 1.2 volts. So somewhere between 1.2 and 1.7, we could treat that as our kind of average threshold. 
the input does have hysteresis, so that means it does have these two different thresholds, one approximately 1.7 and the other at 1.1.